Good evening, uh, uh, HIV family and First St. James family and friends. I hope everyone's having a wonderful evening so far this evening and that you all are blessed where you are. Uh, I just have a few things I wanted to talk about and uh, it's part of, uh, uh, I guess, uh, uh, a reality that I'm stuck in the middle of right now. And uh, before I get started, I would like for you guys to just have in your mind, be meditating on family, whether it's your family, any other family it might be on your mind, it's in your spirit, and it's to pray for the families. The families of this generation, man, we have gone from, from bad to worse. And I, I don't see any change unless we do we do something different. I'm talking about us right now. I'm not talking about our kids. I'm talking about us as parents of today. We need to do something to change the course of the family. Uh, Pastor and I was talking earlier, and we just shared a few things with each other, you know, about, you know, before, you know, I, coming up, you know, our great grandmothers and grandmothers and stuff, even our moms and how they held everything together. You know, they would have, you know, family reunions and stuff, you know, just to keep it, you know, before we got into all this Facebook and all this new technology, even then they knew how important family was and just how important it was gonna be later on for us. So there was basically paving the way for us to be able to, to continue to be in contact and being in love and in tune with each other in these coming years, these years to come. So anyway, uh, I want to share a few uh, verses with you right, right quick. Uh, just, just, just speaking on family. Uh, so the concept of family is extremely important in the Bible both in a physical sense and in a theological sense. The concept of family was introduced in the very beginning as we see in Genesis 1 and 28. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. God explains uh, for creation was for men and women to marry and have children, a man and a woman who would form as one flesh, union through marriage. Genesis 2 and 24 says, and they, and they with their children become a family the essential building block of human society. We also see, see early on in the family members, family members were uh, to look after uh, and look after and care for one another. That's not a lot of that going on right now either. And I'll talk more about that in a few. Uh, when God asked Cain, where is Abel, your brother? Cain responds, <laughs> is in the <laughs> flippant. Am I my brother's keeper? The implication is that, yes, Cain was expected to be Abel's keeper and vice versa. Not only was Cain's murder of his brother an offense against humanity in, in general, but it was especially because it was the first recorded case of fratricide murder of one's sibling. The first recording of it. The Bible has a more communal sense of people and family and the general is generally held in Western cultures today. But we're not gonna get into that too much, but Genesis 6 and 18 said, when God called Abraham out of Hanan, he called him and his family out of Canaan. 
And in Genesis 12, 4 through 5 says, the sign of the Abrahamic covenant was to be applied to all males within one's household, whether they were born in the family or part of the household servant staff. Uh, Genesis 17, 12 through 13, and in other words, God's covenant was Abraham was fam from, was family, not individual. That's what it was about. Uh, the, important, the importance of family can be seen in the provisions of the Mosaic covenant. For example, two of the Ten Commandments deal with maintaining the cohesiveness of the family. The commandment regarding honoring parents is meant to preserve the authority of parents in the family matters. And the seventh commandment prohibiting adultery protects the sanctity of marriage. This all oh, very important. And this we have definitely gotten away from. I got a chance to experience a lot of this firsthand. So let me tell you a little story. Uh, so I had a friend of mine, I, I've talked to you guys before, you know, uh, I was gonna say most of them, all of my friends, are, you know, are five, 10, 15, 20, and in some cases, you know, almost 30 years older than I am. I've been like that for a long time. I have no idea why, but God always put me in the grace of, of older people for some reason. So. So uh, I've always, uh, I always had that experience, and you know, I guess seeing here a lot of things uh, coming up, you know, when I was younger, you know, kind of being shaped and molded not only by my father and, and my grandparents, but older, you know, uh, people that I knew uh, and grew up with. Um, so I have a friend of mine. I probably talked, you know, about him before. Uh, that was a, 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 a real close friend of mine. And he, he passed away December of last, last year. And, um, and uh, actually what happened was I would go, I've been, I've been, in this, I've been knowing this family over 40 something years. And uh, I, would, I was first friends with the younger brother who was probably about three or four years older than me. And I, I was friends with him first. And, uh, you know, we kind of went to school together. As he was coming out of school, I was going in the same school and we kind of hung out, became real close friends. He passed away probably maybe 18 years ago, uh, died real young, at a real young age. And um, so I, I then became friends with one of his older brothers who passed away, like I say, December of last year. I actually went to the house one morning. I would go every morning and drink a cup of coffee. Even when I was working, I would stop by and check on him because he had been ill for a long time, you know, off and on, you know. And uh, I stopped by there one day and uh, his brother, who I'm friends with right now, uh, I asked about, you know, my buddy. And I was like, how's he doing? He's like, oh, I haven't heard from him this morning. I'm like, what? So I go back there and I find him deceased, right, which is real was real traumatizing for me. And I, you know, I can still kind of picture that in my mind sometime. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I then, you know, got a little closer to my friend now and bring me to this situation when I'm talking about, about family. I mean, you know, I can't judge anyone, you know, what God, God does all of that. But I mean, I, you really don't realize uh, uh, just how, dysfunctional families are today in our day and age. And I don't know if you guys ever sit and think about it or meditate about it. You know, we used to come together all the time. I know, and I can kind of see a little falling away, even in my immediate family, you know, where, you know, you know, you get busy, everybody gets go their own way, children grow up, blah, 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 or whatever. But with the technology you have today, I really don't see where that's no excuse. Because even if we have these te this technology, we ought to be able to set up something where we can make a, an appointed time to have some kind of family gatherings. I guess that's something we need to deal with, you know, later on. But 
at the same time real soon. So uh, in any case, so uh, I had been going by my buddy who's, you know, still living, you know, right around the corner from me. Every morning I go around, I drink coffee, talk to him. Well, a few months ago, he had started being a little ill. And I had been talking to him. I would go around every morning, drink a cup of coffee with him. You sit down and talk. You know, we talk about, you know, we talk about the Bible, man. We talk about, you know, at first we didn't. When we were coming up, you know, we talked about women and booze, you know. But now we got to that point to where I guess we, you know, with a certain intersection. And, uh, but now, you know, we would talk, you know, about that. We talk about a little bit about football, but mostly we'd be talking about, you know, just uh, talking about the Lord and which well, I was happy because, you know, when I would, you know, speak to him about Christ, you know, he really wouldn't have too much to say, you know, like, yeah, yeah, that go that. Then over the years, I see now, I don't know what's changed in his life, but now I see him willing to talk more about Christ. And I know there's always a change in our lives when we're coming closer to death. You know, Bible say every knee shall bow. <laughs> every knee shall bow, whether you want to or not. At some point, you're going to bow and recognize that, that Jesus Christ is Lord, <laughs> you know. Um, well, anyway, so so over the, over the late years, I had been seeing him transformed to what, you know, he would start accepting more and more. You know, a little conversation. I wasn't overwhelmed or anything. I would just say a few little things. You know, I thank the Lord for this. I thank the Lord for that. You know, he kind of, yeah, 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 whatever, you know, kind of just blow it off and start talking about something else. And uh, uh, over the last couple of years, now these last few months, it has intensified in the last six months, falling ill. And I know I, I was kind of real upset not long where uh, we were in a position where uh, we were working together and he kind of, kind of threw me off of an opportunity for a job. And uh, I was I was kind of upset with him about that. And I couldn't figure out after, all, you know, all the time we spent together and, you know, all the stuff, you know, that we did and, you know, all the, you know, stuff I was doing to try to help him out because he didn't drive and he didn't really, you know, have a steady job, uh, anything like that. So, you know, I would help him out, you know, pay a bill, you know, if you pay me back, you pay me back. If not, no big deal or what. And, you know, it wasn't really a big deal to me. Money wasn't even the problem. You know, I just felt that it was, it was my duty to do it, you know, if he was in need. And uh, I guess that's what the devil was trying to show me. You know, you're doing all this and guess what? He's still, you know, slapping you in the face anytime he gets, you know, he feel a need. This is what happened to you, you know. And, uh. But I eventually got over there by the grace of God and I continued, I started back going over there. For a while, I was skipping a few days because I was going every morning, drink coffee. It got to the point to where I stopped going. I started going about every couple of days, you know, and because uh, I was dealing with that thing, you know, I was dealing with it. And the Lord was steady ministering to me. He said, no, no, I call you to do this. I call you to do this. This is for you to do this, for you to do. I'm like, man, but, but, but he did, you know, he did this and he did that. The Lord said, I call you to do it. I call you to do it. Just for you to do, just for you to do. So I just kept going around there, faithfully just going around there. You need anything, you know, can I help you out, blah, blah, blah. Well, anyway, so uh, over the last couple of months, uh, I can see his health deteriorating. So I was trying to find out, trying to get in communication with some family members. And uh, he have a brother that's actually a pastor uh, out in Hammond. And I got in touch with him and his wife. And they came down to see him. And man, he talk to them so bad he wouldn't open the door to let him in the house and man I don't know what's going on it's almost like he was possessed I was like it's crazy so uh so I I, I went back over there again the next day man he was a sin stuff and I was like man you know I, I didn't even ask what help you know what happened you know if he wanted to tell me he could tell me but you know you you know, something happened a long time ago. Something was said, a few words were said that he overheard and he didn't like. I don't know if he, he misunderstood it or what. You know, I didn't ask too many questions about it. But I'm like, you know, maybe that's, you know, that, that wasn't what he meant or whatever. But he took that thing to heart and he he been holding on to that thing. And I've been trying to get him to let it go. But anyway, uh, 
man. So his his so I had been trying to get in touch with uh you know someone else because he didn't want to have anything to do with his older brother. And uh, I'm like, man, this is crazy. I never seen anything like this before. So I'm trying to find out what I'm gonna do. I, I got his phone. I'm looking at contacts, trying to find his son. He had one son, and I was trying to get in touch with him, Junior. I was get in touch with him and tell him come check on his dad. You know, did he know his dad was falling ill or whatever? And I couldn't find the number. I'm like, man, what am I gonna do? What I'm gonna do? I don't want this guy to pass away with no family members or nobody Ron. He got a bunch of family. Most of them moved to Atlanta, but you know, he have a you know, few local, like say a brother, you know, and Amy, one in Hammond and one uh <laughs> one in, uh, sister in New Orleans. But anyway, I just couldn't get anything going. I'm like, oh, so I just I just been keeping going around every day. I go around, I drink coffee and I can see, I can see him, man, he's probably about the the half the size he used to be. And, and it's got to the point now when I went over there today, you know, I asked him, man, anything I can do? He said, look, I didn't make any coffee. And, uh, you know, you can make your pot or whatever. I can't even drink it no more. I said, oh, what do you mean? He said, I can't even keep anything down. I've been throwing up all day. I'm like, man, you need to go to the doctor, you know, but he don't go, no, if I, if I take this, you know, self-diagnosing itself, I'm like, oh my Christ. So, uh, Man, and I'm like all messed up in the head. And I'm like praying. I'm like, Lord, please, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to deal with this again, you know, um, right now. And I know the Lord said so he ain't gonna put no more on more on us than we can bear. So I thank God for his word. So uh so finally I mean and you know, I came back home and he said, you know, could you could you uh, get me a pineapple uh soft drink? And the first thing that came to my mind is, oh man. He's starting to get these final requests, you know, because it happened with my brother-in-law, you know, before he passed. You know, he wanted some gumbo. He ate the gumbo. He wanted this. He wanted that. And once he got everything he got, it looked like the next day he passed, the uh, same evening he passed away. So I'm getting flashbacks about that in my mind. I'm like, oh, my God. So anyway, so uh, so finally uh, I brought him the uh, drink and uh, I... Uh, me and Pastor Amos had been talking for a while about some stuff. You know, we we talked for a little while. And right after I got off the phone with him, uh, the phone rang. And I didn't recognize the number. And it was a Texas number. I'm like, who is this? And it didn't say scam. So I was like, all right, maybe it's all right. So then I saw they had text me. And he said, this is, this is uh, Junior. I said, oh, man. So I called him up and I talked to him. And he was like, man, he said, what's going on? I said, man, I don't know, man. Your dad don't want to go to the hospital. He lost a bunch of weight. He said, yeah, I was down there a couple months ago. He told me he just, you know, stomach wasn't, wasn't feeling good. His stomach was upset or whatever. And I noticed he had lost some weight. And uh, he said, nah, I'm all right. You know, I'm all right. You know, it's just a little bug. I need to take some Pepsobismo or whatever. That's self-diagnosing diagnosing again. And... Um, I said, no, man, this got worse. Nah, he can't eat anything. He can't drink anything. I think, you know, you know, it almost seems like his uh, uh, his body is shutting down, you know, because if you can't eat and you can't drink, it ain't much longer. Hey, it's by the grace of God that you you still around. If you can't eat anything or drink anything, what's your body gonna function off of? So I'm like, oh my God. So he was like, I said, look, man, if you need anything, if, you know, you, <laughs> see, man, I need to come down there. He said, uh, you know, call ambulance. I said, you call ambulance, but he's not gonna open the door for him. He wouldn't even open the door for your uh, your, your your uncle. He was like, man. He said, I don't come down. I said, look, if you come down there, I'll get you back home. Or if I need to cash out, you some money or something to get down here. But I think you need to come see about your dad, man. I mean, it's the situation. It just, man, it just tore my heart up. I said, man, I can't believe this, you know. And I know. I've experienced him, how he treated the nieces and nephews. Like he didn't want them to be around and he just alienated everybody. You know, it was like, it was like real toxic environment. I'm like, man, this is gonna come back to haunt you. You know, oh, they don't need me now. They just trying to find one. I'm like, whoa, 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 it's coming for it. Just had a lot of anger. You, like I say, you never know. You don't know what's going on. I, I don't know what's going on with the family, but all I can do is, you know, is pray for him.
Heavenly Father, right now, Father God, we ask you, Father God, to touch not only this family, Father God, but any family, Father God, that might be struggling, Father God. I mean, whether it's it's we holding on to some some simple of even if it's it's not simple for the god i ask you take you that you remove it from us for as far as the east is from the west for the god just remove that thing for the god so we can get back to being a family again for the god so many families are torn up for the god by just the smaller for the smallest of things for the god just a little little misunderstanding for Father God have caused you know brothers to stop talking to brothers and sisters to stop talking to sisters and 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 and, and fathers and you know not communicating with, with 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 sons and sons and fathers and mothers and daughters you know being you know uh uh and 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 arguments where they haven't spoken or seen each other in years and we know time is precious for the god and we know that that uh, tomorrow even today or this hour is not promised to any of us for the god and i ask for the god that you just touch our hearts and our minds for the god and, and just touch us from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet for the god let us realize for the god the importance of you you know, creating the family from the beginning, Father God, and you you had it in mind, Father God, that we would stay close together, Father God, and, and for the husband and the wife to come as one, Father God, and, and for the, the children, Father God, to, to go out and, and create their families, Father God, and for us to thrive, Father God. You never meant for us to be negative and, and, and stuff like that for the god we know we know how you meant for the god because you have love for us for the god you spared us for the god <clears throat> for the god we know sin for the god was looking for death son. and you sent your son jesus for the god to die for us, that we may have the rights to the tree of life for the god and we just ask him for the god that you keep on pruning us for the god keep on showing us for the god keep on hiding word in our heart for the god that we might not sin against you for the god let us realize, Father God, that 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 our uh, fathers and our mothers, Father God, and aunties and uncles and grandparents, just how important they are in our lives, Father God, and our kids' lives, Father God, and just unite us together, Father God. Bring us so close together that we can. One can't fall without the other, Father God. I ask you, Father God, you have all power, Father God. You sit high, you look low, Father God. You know everything, you see everything, Father God. I know and I trust and believe, Father God, that you will do this, Father God. And I'm looking, Father God, to see the results of it, Father God. And each and every one on this call, Father God, I ask you to touch them, Father God. Touch them right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that they will take more uh, 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 well, they did not not take uh, their family uh, 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 for granted, Father God. That they will that will they will invest in them, Father God, and then they will put time into it, Father God. That it will become what you meant for it to be, Father God. We see, Father God, right now, Father God, that it's failing, Father God. But we know it can turn around, Father God. We just line up and do what you call us to do, and be that family that you call us to be. I thank you, and I bless each and every one of you. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen, and thank God.